I'm grateful to him today for his presence with us. And we are grateful to you that the Lord has moved on your heart to be with us today. And we, we count it a high honor and a great privilege that you are with us today. But it is by divine ordination that you are with us today. It is not by happen chance, it's not by occasion, but God had ordained this day for all of us from the beginning of the world. Hallelujah. So today, as the word goes forth, encourage all of us to allow the word of God to minister to us in his own divine, sovereign way. Let him speak to your spirit. Yes, you are here for family reunion. Uh, you've been invited. But if every one of us could pass through a situation x-ray scanner, every one of us, as dressed up as we are, with our makeup on, with our perfume, cologne, and smelling good, and everything, beneath all of that mask, there's issues that's going on. There's pain that's there. Some dealing with grief, bereavement, struggle, marital problems, family problems dysfunctional problems on our jobs and even within hallelujah so the Lord is here to minister to each of us in his own way uniquely for our situation so I invite you to allow the word of God to minister to you in his own way the passage has been read, Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30. And Jesus gives an invitation. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Frank Williams needs to go to the to, to in the foyer. Come unto me all ye that labor and I will give you Rest. It's an invitation that is given universally by the God of the ages, Jesus Christ himself, God manifested in the flesh. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. It doesn't matter what is the cause of the heavy, of the lateness, of the burden. It doesn't matter the source of the burden. Doesn't matter how long the burden has persisted. Doesn't matter how intense, how critical, how deep, how wide, or how high, or how, how dark. It doesn't matter. The master speaks and says, come to me. Bring it to me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will exchange with you. I will take your burdens, and I'll give you my rest. So today, I will speak to you from the thought, Jesus, our Sabbath rest. Hallelujah. Jesus our Sabbath rest. The message focus 
God's Sabbath rest for man. Basically, in my presentation today, we'll cover three areas. The Old Testament Sabbath day rest, the New Testament Sabbath day rest, and then God's desire to give man rest for all ages and eternally. We, we, we live in a world where because of the issues of life, dealing with life on a continuing basis, we struggle and, and there are problems, issues that come to us, situations and circumstances and conditions, they come uninvitedly. We do everything we can to keep them from coming to us. But they come and they persist. They come uninvited and they stay longer than we want them to. We want them to leave, but they stay and they get worse. So we find a way to inoculate ourselves. We, some turn to alcohol, drugs. We try to find relief, addiction. Counseling, and we find in the end the problem still there. Now, how can I escape? David once said, I, I wish that I had wings that I might fly away. Don't you feel like that sometimes? I just wish that I could push a button and escape out of this. I want to get away. You go on vacation, and while you're on vacation, you still got to, I got to go back to it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and he even, there is an axiom that says life imitates art or art imitates life. So we find all of our television shows that try to show us life, and and, 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 and sometimes, you know, at one time we got hooked on the soap operas because they were showing us issues in life. We want to get to the edge of night and search for tomorrow. Ah, but when the show is over, your problems are still there. Mm -hmm. You go to the baseball game. Uh, you go to the concert. Ah, mm -hmm. When the, when the game is over, your problem is still there. How do I find rest? Today, I want to call our attention to a God that wants to give us rest. His mind, the first thoughts on the mind of God was mankind, was rest for mankind. Ephesians 1 says that we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. That the first thought that the Bible records on the mind of God, that the mind of God, before he ever said, be light, God's mind was on rest, permanent rest, for man, God spoke the universe into existence. God created the universe. And then the, the crowning creation, the crowning of his, the crown jewel of his creation was man. Because God involved himself more in the creation of man than he did in his entire creation. God spoke and there was. God spoke and there was. 
But when it came to man, God didn't just speak and there was. God involved himself. He took the dust of the earth and shaped man into his own image and he blew the breath of life in him and man became a living soul. God took dirt that you and I walk on when we leave here today took dirt and formed it and blew breath of his breath into it and the dirt stood up and became a living soul the only difference between me and you and the dirt we walk on is the word of God and God created the universe the Bible says in six days he created the universe and in the seventh day God rested from his works. That shows you where God's mind was always on the best interest of man. When the Bible says that God rested from his works, God never needs to rest. But God rested to be a model and an example for man that in six days I did my work of creation and I'm giving you a model for you to live by so in six days work but I'm gonna give you a day for you to rest and I'm gonna model it so God modeled that rest and gave man a day of rest in the Old Testament. For Israel, their Sabbath or their rest was a man. A day, I'm sorry, was a day. God's blueprint and his word established for man a pattern for his dominion and stewardship. God said, work six days and the seventh day rest. Mm -hmm. God ordained a rest for Israel in the Old Testament law. God gave them the law. Now, the rest that God gave Israel was called Sabbath. It was a day. It was limited. It was limited in many ways. It was limited to a people. God never gave the law to the Gentiles. There's quiet in the house. Somebody say amen. amen. And now the Gentiles take it up and the Is Israelites couldn't keep it. Their fathers couldn't keep it. In the New Testament, in the 15th chapter of, of Acts, uh, Peter talks after the Gentiles are engrafted. Now the Jews want to put on the Gentiles this burden, this yoke of the law. And Peter had to tell them, why are you putting that yoke on them when we nor our fathers could keep it? God gave man the law. And in the law, he gave them rest, but he only gave it to Israel. Now, so what does that mean to Gentile? That means that we can, can act crazy and do what we want to and we're not liable to God? Hold on just a minute. Hold on just a minute. The rest that God gave Israel was not a lasting rest. It was physical rest but we not only need physical rest we need spiritual rest we need psychological rest we need emotional rest there's a lot of folks that lay down at night and they sleep but they don't get rest 
They lay down in their chairs and they are reclining, but they are not resting because of the problems in their mind. Their minds are turmoil. Their minds are at war. Emotionally and psychologically, they are torn apart. God told Israel, I'm going to give you a day. But in addition to that, Israel, once a year, the high priest had to go into the holiest of holies and sprinkle blood on the mercy seat so that they could get relief from their sins, from their mind, from their burdens, from their spiritual wickedness. So the rest was limited. The rest was not lasting. Because they had to keep doing it over and over and over and over again. I suspect that if each of us in our weightiest moments could put on a scale and say, what bothers me? It wouldn't be physical rest. Hmm. -mm. That's not the stuff that keeps you. When, when people come to me and they say, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. I said, why do you want me to pray for you? Because I'm tired. So you don't need prayer. You need rest. You don't need prayer when you've overextended yourself physically. You need to go to bed and sleep. Ah! But there's one thing that sleep not going to give you. When your mind is turning over like hot grits and, and your mind is turning like a tornado, you can sleep and close your eyes. But when you wake up, you wish that I could go back to sleep again. That's the rest that Jesus comes to address. The rest was not lasting. The New Testament ushered in God's new Sabbath rest in a relationship with man. Watch this. God never intended, God gave Israel the law. And it wasn't that the law was inadequate or the law was unholy or unrighteous, but the law the weakness in the law was not in the law, it was in man. It was in our flesh because we have this condition since Adam disobeyed God, we have this condition in us called, I can't help it. I do the best I can. Uh huh. God never called us to do the best we can. Mm-hmm. So now, watch this. In the New Testament, God ushered in a new order, a new relationship. Matthew 121 says, She shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And at Christmas time, we read that, Matthew 121, and that's where we stop. But when you go back and study, the next two verses, 22 and 23, are really the crux of the matter. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, now Matthew is quoting from Isaiah 7 and 14. She, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. There are over a thousand manifestations of God in, in time and space. But there's only one time that God ever manifested his total being in one manifestation. And that was and is in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, he is with us. 
He is with us. Don't be afraid. He is with us. Oh, well, I thought he was the son of God. Yes, he is. He is. He is the father in creation. He is the son in redemption. He is the Holy Ghost in power. And his name is. His name is. There is one God. There's one throne in heaven. And there's one that sits on the throne. His name is. Hallelujah. So look what God did. In this manifestation, God, every other manifestation that God ever gave to man, the manifestation, Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, every manifestation, God is independent. There's nothing outside of himself. But when it comes to Emmanuel in the New Testament, God loved man so much till God says, I'm going to include you in my name. I don't know why he loved me, but I'm glad he does. When a man and a woman comes to the altar to be married, all the while that they are courting, Mm -hmm. The courting is not the objective. A man is courting his wife, his girlfriend, because he wants to bring her to the altar and exchange the vow for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, and sickness and in health, till death us do part. And the minister says, I pronounce you man and wife. And the man says, hallelujah, at least for that day. <laughs> hallelujah. They become one flesh. They become one flesh. It's a mystery of marriage that symbolizes the union of Jesus to his church. So God says, in this manifestation, I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I'm going to put man in my name. So when the man marries the wife, then the wife says, uh, my name now, my maiden name was Smith. But now I'm marrying Mr. Jones. And I love Mr. Jones so much that not only am I giving myself totally to him, and he's giving himself to me, but I am surrendering my surname. And my new name now is his name. When we come to Jesus and we marry Jesus, we are born of his spirit being filled with the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues and the spirit gives the ability and we are baptized in his name I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall or have received the Holy Ghost now I take on Jesus by burying taking on his similitude at Calvary. So now, my name is not just Joe Lewis Middleton, but my name is Joe Lewis Middleton Jesus. Because I'm married to Jesus. I'm married to Jesus. I'm one with him. I've been made now a part of his DNA. In that relationship, he does something that the law could not do. You see, the law is like x-ray. When you go to the doctor and you have a broken or a cracked bone in your body, what happens is, when you take an x-ray, the x-ray shows you where the break is. 
but the x-ray can't fix it. The x-ray says you got a broken bone and it's right here, but it's still broken. But in the new relationship, see, the, that x-ray was man's conscience. God gave man a conscience. And listen, you don't have to teach a child that stealing is wrong, that lying is wrong. You don't have to teach him that. No, no, because when Johnny goes in the cookie jar and, and mama's not looking, why is he doing it when mama's not looking? And then when he got the crumbs on his mouth, you said, what is that on your mouth? Uh, uh, mama, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Son, you've been in the cookie jar. No, mama, I haven't been in the cookie jar. Listen, I've been there. Hallelujah. My, my mother baked a cake one time, and my brother and I decided that we were going to sample the cake. And, and we, we, we vowed to our mother that we didn't touch that cake. So my mother backed off and came back with another one. She said about five minutes later, she said, was the cake good? My brother said, yes, it was good. She said, come here, come here. Conscience, conscience. Listen, even when I was in the world, I, I was listening. I think it was Barry White had songs said he said he, he was cheating on his wife and he told his conscience, he said, conscience, if you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. When you do wrong, your conscience tell you you're wrong. You know you shouldn't steal. You know you shouldn't do that. But the conscience can't fix the problem. Because you wind up in the same place the next night. And your conscience keeps speaking. You know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. And then when you do wrong, now you got to lie on top of it. But Jesus says, I'm going to bring you a new relationship. My relationship with Jesus brings rest. In the New Testament Sabbath rest, the Sabbath is in a man, and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus, in order to give us the rest, he had to pay a price to give us that rest. Ah, yes, it's free, but it didn't come cheap. The story is told that the chicken and the pig was walking down the street one day and they passed the restaurant and they looked in the restaurant and the chicken said to the pig, he said, look at that. They're having ham and eggs for breakfast. Without us, they wouldn't have no breakfast. The pig said to the chicken, it's easy for you to say. All you had to do was to lay an egg but I had to give my life. Hallelujah. In order for Jesus to give us his rest, he had to pay the price. He had to die and give up his life so he could give us his life. That's how much this new salvation rest called him. When at Calvary, when Jesus said, it is finished, it was done. Everything that we needed for his rest in this world and in the eternity was already done. Jesus demonstrated this with his disciples. He's taking them across the Sea of Galilee. And he speaks to them and says to them, Disciples, fellas, we are going to the other side. They get in the boat, in the ship, and they are crossing the Sea of Galilee. And all of a sudden, a storm develops. A storm cascades. And it appears that their lives are in danger. 
And while the disciples were fretting and fearing for their lives, they suddenly dawned on them, where is Jesus? And they find the master in the hinder part of the ship sleeping, resting in the midst of the storm. What was he doing? Demonstrating to them, boys, fellas, when you walk with me, you are going to have some turbulence. You're going to have some storms in your life. You're going to have some valleys. You're going to have some pain. You're going to have some disappointment. You're going to have some agony. You're going to have some dark nights. But boys, with the stuff I'm going to give you, you can rest. You can lay down and go to sleep because the stuff I'm giving you, this stuff will hold you and you'll know that I'm more than a conqueror, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, that he will never allow more to come to me than I can handle because his grace is always enough. He gives me a song in the midnight hour. He tells me that whatever he allows to come to me, that he says, I'll see to it that everything works together for your good. He said, I'll turn every stumbling block into a stepping stone. You can trust me. You can cast all of your cares upon me. In the darkest night, I'll, I'll put a parade around you. I'll guard your soul. And the peace of God that surpasses understanding will keep your hearts and minds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The New Testament rest brought in a new order. It was fulfilled in Jesus. In, Jesus. In, that, in that process, Jesus brought the Jews and the Gentiles together. When Jesus was speaking in the Sermon on the Mount, to show you his deity, his godness, he says to them, you have heard, in Matthew 5, 38, 39, you have heard, you have heard it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. You kill my donkey, I kill yours. You kill my oxen, I kill yours. An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. That's what the law said in Israel. Ah, oh, but watch this. The lawgiver says, but I say, now that's the old, that's the law, but I'm giving you now a new order that's for Jew and Gentile. Watch this. Man couldn't keep the law, and the law could never give them eternal life. Now watch this. If the law could only give you a grade of a D. Now, Jesus came, fulfilled the law, did away with it, and says now, I'm not demanding a D or a C or a B. I'm demanding an A. My God, if I'm taking uh, calculus, and I can't get a C, now you tell me I got to make an A. My God, what am I going to do? Ah. But Jesus says, you say an eye for an eye, but I say that resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Watch this. You have heard it said that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say, the law says that. But now the lawgiver is giving you a new law. But I say, not thus saith.
say it's the Lord because the Lord is speaking now. But I say, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Huh? Not, not only just not hate them, but I want you to love them. And I want you to pray for them. And I want you to do good. Every time they have an opportunity, do good to them. Lord, my God, how am I going to do that? Ah, the stuff that I'm going to give you, that stuff that's called the Holy Ghost, it'll work in you just like it worked in me. When he hung on the cross and looked down at the folks that put him on the cross, he looked down at the folks and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It'll work in you just like it worked in me hallelujah he brought the Jews and, and the Gentiles together in a new order it was established by God's grace it ushered in a new relationship with man it was much better than the old relationship uh-huh in the old relationship uh, the, the rest was just for one day in Jesus, he doesn't want us to just have rest on the Sabbath. Uh, and by the way, uh, there's a big issue today. What day should we worship on? Uh, Paul tells us uh, in Romans that one man esteems a day above another. In the New Testament, because Jesus was resurrected on Sunday, the New Testament church established Sunday. But you know what? If you worship, we are to worship the Lord every day of every week, of every month, of every year. You find churches now that every year they'll have consecration. Every January, just like resolution, we're going to have a consecration for the month. These are man-made. They had consecration in the Old Testament because the Holy Ghost did not indwell men. They had to be consecrated in order to come into the presence of God. Listen, just like you hear this stuff, there's only one fast in the Bible that is abstinence from food and drink. But now, there's probably 30 fasts. Man, got a Daniel fast. Folks, Daniel was not fasting. Daniel did not eat meat that was forbidden for the Jews to eat. That was their dietary laws. He was not fasting. We got an Isaiah fast, Ezekiel fast. Folks, won't you do a God fast? It's fasting is without food, without drink. That's what fasting is. We got a television fast. I'm not going to look at television. Maybe that's not fasting. You shouldn't look at it. Most of the stuff on it is. <sighs> it's a better relationship. Because now, Jesus wants us to have rest every moment of every second, of every minute, of every hour, of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year. You don't have to wait for the new year to have rest, to turn a page. You can have rest every day. Because when I'm walking in Jesus, he says, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, victory shall be mine. Victory shall be mine. No wonder Job said, he knoweth the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Hallelujah. Because I'm leaning and depending on Jesus. He gives us lasting rest. And he gives us great promises. Jesus is rest for the weary, for all ages, for time and eternity. And throughout whatever is going on in our lives, when you are born again, 
when you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in his name, when you're living in him, you are hidden in Jesus. You are hidden in him. You can say like David, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp round about me, my heart shall not fear. I'm still going to be in my rest. The war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in this temple. Why? For in the time of trouble, in the time of trouble, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in the tabernacle, in the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He's going to hide me. Let me close. My wife and I, we went to a meeting and one of the district elders, I think it was from one of the bah Bahama Island, they were having church one night and one of the sisters was walking to church and there was a bunch of devilish thugs with wickedness in them. They hid out in the alley they were going to attack her and rape her and rob her. When they ran out and made their demands, the woman started calling on Jesus. She said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. She kept on calling his name and she walked right through them and they ran on to each other and they were fighting each other. The woman went on to church and started praising the Lord. It was as if that God made her invisible. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me. In the time of trouble, he shall rescue me. In the time of trouble, he'll pick me up. Jesus, he is our peace. Baby, I don't know what the edge of night has to say, but baby, you don't even not just on the edge of night, in the midst of the darkest night. Exodus 20 and 20 says that when the mountain was shaking and darkness covered the mountain, the Bible said Moses drew near the darkness where God was. It never gets too dark for God. I don't care how dark your night is. Baby, you don't have to be on the edge of night. You can be in the middle of night. He'll meet you there. He is there before you get there. Listen, uh, he can, you don't have to look at guiding light. He said that lamp is a, that lamp is with, hallelujah. That word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. His word will guide you. His word will lead you. His word will keep you. He doesn't care whether you're young or old. You can be young and restless. You can be old and restless. You can be male and restless, female and restless. If you're restless, come to the place where he'll give you rest. Hallelujah. He's rest for the ages. And now I'm close with our thought for the week. Hallelujah. Let's stand. I want us to read this. Jesus is our rest. Our rest today is not in a day. Our rest is in a man named Jesus. It's in a relationship with him. Not that you don't already have a relationship with him, but he wants that intimate. He wants to marry you. A lot of you, you've been courting Jesus a long time. Now it's time 
to marry him. Yes, when you were down to your last dime, he put money in your pocket. He put food on your table. He healed you. Ah, but baby, he wants to do more than that. He wants to save your soul. That's why he was manifested. Jesus wants to give you his rest. Let's, let's read this together. Thought for the week, all together. Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? That we might find, and what? You'll never call on him, and he's too busy. You'll never call on him. He said, the broken and contrite spirit, I will in no wise despise. Whatever is going on in your life, I want every, I'm asking now, I want, it's prayer time. I'm asking that every head bow and every eye close. You know where you are and what you're going through. And I'm here to remind you that the master is calling softly and tenderly. He has been speaking to you even before today. But today, he has spoken to you in a clear and clarion way. He's saying, come to me. I have more for you. Yes, you know me, but I want you to know me even greater. I want to take you into that relationship where we are intimate together, where we are married, and that my spirit dwells in you Hallelujah, and my name is on you. Yes, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the invitation. We thank you for the provision that you have made. We thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And Lord, now your word has spoken. Lord, you know that soul that you are talking to. Lord, you've been talking to them before today. But Lord, today is a decision day. Ah, God, you want them to experience you in a new way. Lord, help them. Give them strength to say, I surrender. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Lord, I give my life to you. And Lord, I want you to give your life to me. I want to change in my life. Lord, I want to change in my life. Lord, I want to change in my life. I have done it my way long enough. So Lord, now I come presenting my body as a living sacrifice. Just accept me, Lord. Make me a new creation. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your rest. Thank you for your rest. Thank you for your rest. Thank you for your salvation. Lord, thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.